A common question that I'm asked is how do you read so much? Pretty consistently, I manage to read between 50 and 75 books per year. I see it as a good minimum to read one book per week. Compared to some people, this is not a lot. There are plenty of people who can read over 100 books in a year. But compared to the typical American, it is actually quite a lot. According to some data from the Pew Research Center, the typical American only reads four books per year, and on average, Americans read 12 books per year. Those numbers seem a little odd because there are plenty of people who don't read any books at all. All. So if you were able to read a book per week, you were actually reading 13 times as many books as the typical American. And maybe the most surprising thing about this is that just about anybody can do this. If you follow some pretty simple tips, you can actually drastically increase the number of books you read every year. There are a number of bad ways to increase your reading numbers. You might only read really short books or read books that are well below your reading ability, or maybe you'll read book summaries and then claim that that means you've read the book. All of these are bad, but explaining why they are bad is important. You should want to read more because it helps you develop as a person. You learn new things, you develop new skills, and you expand your mind. That's why my first piece of advice for anyone who is looking to read more is to first ask yourself the question, why am I doing this? You want to figure out your motivation for wanting to read more. If the motivation really is just that you want to see a larger number on your Goodreads account, then actually reading has become a vanity project for you. And vanity projects are treacherous and difficult to sustain. You want to figure out a really good motivation for wanting to read more. So find what motivates you and keep that in mind as you try to read more, because that's going to really help you if you're ever struggling. Having a goal is always a powerful motivation. In the end, reading more is significantly less important than reading better. I talked about that on a previous video and I'll throw a link somewhere so that you can go and watch it. I think everything I said in that video is still true. If you have to read less in order to learn more, that is fine and good. Don't lose sight of what matters. Now, as you're trying to read more, you're going to want to pursue variety. And I typically pursue variety in two ways, genre and format. So I like to read a few books at once. Right now I am reading a history of the Cold War, a history of cryptography, a fantasy novel, a memoir, and then a classic novel. By reading a variety of books, I am able to maintain interest for longer periods of time. If I become bored with one book, I can just switch to another book. And that means that I can spend more time during the day actually reading. And I also read in a variety of formats. So I read quite a few physical books, that is the majority of my reading, but I also make use of an e-reader and audiobooks. By the way, there is a debate about whether or not audiobooks count as reading. I am going to set that aside. I think audiobooks are fine. I enjoy them. They're good. Now, I like to be strategic about which books are read in which formats. So for books where I'm going to take a lot of notes, I highly prefer physical books. For lighter reads, pleasure reads, I prefer my e-reader. And for certain kinds of nonfiction, like this memoir I'm reading by Christopher Hitchens, I really like audiobooks. By reading in different formats, you're actually going to find that you read in different places. So I like to keep physical books either on my desk or by my bed. I carry my Kindle with me basically everywhere that I go. And I find that throughout the day, if I have my Kindle with me, I can just read a few pages where previously I might just look at my phone. And since I have my phone with me pretty much at all times, that means that I can listen to audiobooks while going on walks or doing chores. Reading becomes just an ordinary time-filling activity. It becomes the kind of thing that you reach for first when you have some free moments. And again, that variety is going to let you spend more time per day reading. Now we probably need to talk about taking notes. I like to take notes as I read. I've talked about this in a few videos and I have a video particularly about a note card system I use when I'm reading particularly difficult works. But you need to keep this in mind. Note taking is a tool for understanding. Sometimes we can become so obsessed with note taking systems or with doing it right that we actually think too much about note taking and we don't actually take good notes or even worse, we don't actually get around to reading the books that we wanted to take notes on. When I read a work of philosophy or history, I take quite a few notes. I annotate, I write comments in the margins, I use note cards to extract information and I sort them later. But I'm doing this because typically I'm reading those books 
for a reason. Like right now I'm trying to write a book and I need to do research for that book. I use my note taking system with my note cards to get the information out of those books so that I can use it in my writing projects. But for other works like works of fiction, which I read just because I love literature, I don't really need to take a lot of notes. Instead, if there's a quote that sticks out to me, what I can do is just put it in my commonplace book. So I use my commonplace book as a repository for those interesting, insightful, or beautiful thoughts that I stumble upon when I'm reading, but it's far less systematic. It's just there because it's good to write those sorts of things down. And there are also plenty of books where I just never take any notes and that is okay. Mixing it up and then changing your note-taking practice based on the text that you're reading is going to help you read more as well. Now, here's the biggest piece of advice I can give you on how to read more, and it is also the simplest and probably the most difficult to follow. If you are struggling to find time to read, you need to schedule your reading time. You can do this in a few ways. You might just form the habit of always reading before bed, or if you're someone who likes to block out time during the day, put a block on your calendar that says reading time, and then make sure that during that time you actually read. I hear from a lot of people that they do not have time to read, and for some people, due to work or family or life circumstances, that may be true. But for the vast majority of people, I would wager that they can certainly find time to read. Scheduling is going to make that easier, but you might also need to think about what you should eliminate from your life if you want to read more. If you are someone who wants to try to read, I don't know, a hundred books in a year, then you need to think about all of the things that you are currently doing that you don't need to do and that you don't want to do as much as you want to read those books. So for instance, I don't watch TV, I don't play video games, and I only watch films every once in a while. If I really need to get a lot of reading done, I take YouTube off my phone. Basically, I try to eliminate other forms of entertainment because my preferred form is reading. By eliminating those distractions, we are able to find time and properly focus on what we're reading, which means also that in the time that you've blocked out, you're actually gonna get through more pages because there are fewer things going on around you. Think about it like this. If you read for 15 minutes a day, then you will read for 5,475 minutes in a year, which is a little over 90 hours. You can read quite a few books in 90 hours, but if you can find an hour per day, then you will read for 365 hours per year. And think about all of the books that you can read in that amount of time. Now, if you can make an hour a day your minimum reading time, and then you'll also find all those other times to just read a little bit more, then the number of books that you read really does drastically increase. Now, keep in mind though, that this might not be easy to do. For one, we don't like to eliminate distractions but also at the beginning, you will find that it is difficult to maintain your focus and attention on the books that you're reading, especially if you're not reading that much right now. But what you will find if you can schedule regular and consistent reading time in fairly large blocks, like an hour a day, you'll find that your mind changes. Think of your mind kind of like a muscle, and we know that if you wanna get stronger or if you wanna develop some kind of physical ability, what you need to do is find regular and consistent and slightly difficult task or training. Your mind is just like any other muscle in that regard, and reading is one of those training exercises. If you haven't run for a really long time and you just start running, you're not going to be able to immediately run a marathon. Similarly, if you haven't been reading much, you might not be able to read a really difficult book for an hour at a time. But this does not mean that you are unintelligent or you are incapable of reading. What it means is that you need to practice. So just to recap, I have suggested that you wanna think long and hard about why you want to read more in order to determine your goals. You're going to want to pursue variety in both the books you read and how you read them. You are going to want to do the right kind of note-taking for the kind of reading that you're doing, and you are going to want to schedule your reading time. But I'm sure, of course, that there are other tips that other people have found useful, so if you have one of those, why don't you share it down in the comments below, and we can help each other out.